right now we are seeing huge disparity between developed countries and the underdeveloped countries when it comes to AI innovation capabilities and access to the infrastructure. Do you think this big disparity could lead to a global crisis or a labor challenge in any way? I definitely think it's going to lead to labor challenges. I don't know whether it's going to bubble up into uh, a big crisis, but, but you know, it could eventually, because as we talk about disparities, right, in technological qualification between industrialized and post-industrialized economies on one side and those that are still developing or that are threshold economies, you know, we're also talking then uh, about the resulting income uh, inequality. And so when that shear becomes broader, then obviously people become very unhappy. And, and, and so that could then lead uh, to not just economic crises, but also to political crises. And, and nobody wants that. Uh, and that's also why I'm advising, uh, you know, my friends in Malaysia, in the UAE and elsewhere uh, to learn as hard and fast as they can from uh, the existing top tier innovators on model creation, primarily in the United States when it comes to Gen AI, but China is uh, close behind as a close second. You know, you cannot immediately replicate uh, the kind of compute power and talent that they bring to bear. So learn from them as hard and fast as you can, but then make sure that you develop your own um, model creation and model application capabilities that are appropriate for your local market. Uh, that is because I, I believe that it's a non-starter for Silicon Valley to run models for the rest of the world that are not culturally appropriate, right? Even though we're very diverse over here. Um, and I think the open source uh, trend that we're seeing now, uh, arguably you know, spurred by Llama at, at Meta, um, will will definitely help with that.